All right, well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, Frame.io plus Film Riot, the great Ryan Connolly. Um, let's give him a hand. Thank you, Ryan, for coming out here. Thank you. Thank you. So, Ryan, I think uh, you're, you were one of our, you were one of our big early like advocates. Yeah. I remember the, I, I was, I remember the day in the office. I invented it. Pretty much. I mean, let's be honest. It, it was an exciting day when your video came out, and we were like, oh, guys, Ryan Connolly uses Frame.io. This is so cool. Uh, this was back when Frame.io was like a lot smaller than you can see it is today. Um, and it was a very exciting moment. But today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Ryan's recent film, Ballistic. And to uh, get us started, I'm going to show a quick little trailer for it. Day, wake up. Baby, I need you to look at me. There's a man in the house. Get up. If, if any of you have not seen the film, go watch it. Look it up on YouTube. It's wonderful. And he also has some excellent behind the scenes stuff as well that you can go look up. Um, but I, I would love to talk a little bit about your, your workflow here because uh, you guys may know he's based in Texas, but this crew was all over the place. Do you want to yeah. list the locations of your crew? Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it was St. Louis. I had a bunch of people in LA. I think someone was in Ohio. Uh, I don't think in post, I don't think there was anyone in Texas other than me. Uh, so pretty much everything was done through Frame.io. I give you this mic because I like real. Everything was done through Frame.io minus um, the editing, but m like half of it was done through Frame.io. Because I would go to my editor in St. Louis, and I think in the end total I was there with him for 18 days over three different trips, but in between we were constantly working on it, so a lot of work was happening on Frame.io even through the edit. Uh, can I ask you, uh, if you were a tree? So, you, you, so you've got L.A., uh, St. Louis, uh, uh, Texas, sorry, where in Texas? Uh, Dallas. Dallas, Texas, California. Calif uh, yeah, uh, Ohio, and you have some people in Europe, England, um, all using Frame.io. Can you tell me a little bit about how, how that worked and how you use Frame.io for all these different people? Yeah, I mean, to start, it was all the edit. And uh, Lucas, my editor, started just by doing assemblies. And then that kind of gave us a range of where we were at with the scene. So I could sort of start wrapping my head around remembering the footage that we shot. Because we shot over, I don't know how many days. It was seven days, eight days, something like that. Uh, my DP is actually right there. Chase. Hi, Chase. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's hear it up for Chase. He's good looking and talented. Hi, Chase. Um, uh, so, it, it, you know, I was able to wrap my head around what we shot again and kind of remember the tempo of things and what we didn't get, you know, which is always a thing. And then I would be able to go out with him with, you know, a general idea. And then after that first pass, uh, where him and I, you know, got a decent pass of the scene going, then we could really start working in Frame.io. Before that, it was just assemblies until we really sat together. I didn't give any notes at first. And then there was a lot of going back and forth with him and you know different alts. And <clears throat> so uh, these are reviews that we sent out in the end. And w when I s some people send out a review and everybody comments on them, I like to send it out individually. That way people aren't you know, uh, influenced by other people's thoughts. You know, it's like, oh, that guy said this was a problem. Maybe it is, so maybe I should say something about it. You know, I want fresh takes. How many people are pointing out this moment and how many people are not affected by it all? So if I have eight people who haven't said a word about it, but one does, then I like it, then maybe I'm like, all right, maybe that's not the problem. Uh, so I send all those out individually, and that's what this is. And these are, those are alts from my editor. So there's a lot of flashback moments, a lot of, um, you know, uh, stylistic, you know, emotional pulls. So we went through a lot of versions of those, trying to dial in 
the best way to pull the emotion out of those moments. So that was probably where we landed the most in frame IO, was able to really dig into those and swap shots around. And I think for every flashback, Lucas had 10 versions that we were messing around with to see what landed the hardest. I can see that you've got some some looks like you know a 13 minute cut here. So this is mo most of the film, but you also have some of these tiny little pieces. So you're just going over a, a, a single sequence here, like a two minutes or 40 seconds here, and you're going over that. Um, and I think we're going to jump into one of them here. Um, and we've got a uh, sorry, you have to crane your neck a little bit of the comment, but uh, 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 and you can you can see some of the example comments here. But let's we can jump right into. Uh, VFX. So tell us a little about how that worked. Yeah, I mean, it was a basic pipeline. Uh, we had a shot list of the VFX, and then we'd able to, you know, go through reviews here. And this was great, you know, having that needs review approved system there, because it can get pretty crazy, as you can see, especially when you get towards the end. At first, you, like, start with the intention of being as organized as possible. And then, at least for me, by the end, it's the biggest mess ever. Things are just tossed everywhere. Uh, so it's really nice to be able to have the, you know, approved needs a review. And then versions are obviously put into the same uh, uh, folder together, pretty much, which is great. Um, and, and I do like, I think it's on here. I like to talk in numbers with my VFX artists. I, I work with a lot of VFX artists, and I, I, I learned that from them is, you know, just could, could this be a little bit bigger? And they're like, well, what the hell is a little bit bigger? Do you want it Godzilla or do you? So I try to talk in percentages or, you know, even with editing, for instance, you know, you could say when I'm sitting with my editor, I can say, can you cut 12 frames off of that? And that's great because then he can play it right back. And they're like, oh, I was wrong. Could you put two frames back? In frame my own, not as much. So I like to leave it up to their judgment a bit. <coughs> And that's where percentages come in. So instead of saying cut 12 frames, I could be, you know, cut 10% off the top. And then he'll take, you know, his judgment to the pacing on that. And that pretty much the same thing with the VFX. Could this be 30% smaller? I'm not saying literally do the math and make this, you know, it's kind of a roundabout that, that they can bring their own judgment to at that point. And, and then can you walk us through a little, uh, you, I know that you did most of your work um, at your home base in Dallas, but you but you then also traveled a little bit. Um, can you can you tell us a little bit about how you are working with these people remotely and then in person, and how that like that transition went, and how did how that go for you? Yeah, the remotely for everything but uh, editing was pretty much the entire process. Um, and then you know people like in England, I wasn't going out there, so that was the entire process. So VFX, it was the entire process. Uh, we worked with the video co-pilot guys on this as well, and that was the entire process. I didn't go to their studio for any of that, but with the finishing, they're in LA, yeah. Uh, but for the finishing with uh, the color grading and uh, the final sound mix and the music, uh, toward the end I just did one trip where, where I just went out there and I sat with all of them for the finishing to dial everything in. Everything else was done all through Frame.io because, you know, it's really possible with how detailed you can get uh, you know, with the VFX, you're drawing on the image, but you can go frame by frame with this stuff. And, and, and I really like that disconnect of not being in the room and being able to sit with something. Because um, oftentimes you have an idea of what that moment is supposed to be. And then somebody brings their perspective at it. And it doesn't mean that it's a wrong perspective. It might be the better one. But the first time you see it, it's like, what the hell is this? You know, this is what I said. Um, so I like to watch something, watch it again, wait a day, and then watch it again, and then give my review. And doing it this way really helps to do that and even get granular down to the, you know, going to the frame instead of having to do a Google Doc of being on, on this exact frame at this moment. You know, it's a lot more specific. How many of all have received notes that say, at this point in time in the video, and like it's, Oh, I hate that kind of thing. Yeah, I got some hands going up. Uh, it's the worst. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. The, uh, the that's something that I had not really thought about um, with Frame.io before. But I think what you're saying is that um, when when someone's when you're sitting there in the room, there's sort of like a lot of pressure on that moment. But if you are doing it asynchronously on your own time, then you can take a little time, and there's not that sort of interpersonal pressure where you're like standing over their shoulder. Is that is that right? Yeah, especially when you're just starting to work with someone, um, you know, because it is, it's a very emotional thing. Everybody's wearing their heart on the sleeve in the moment. You're putting you into what you're doing if you care. That's what should be what's happening. So, you know, if I'm sitting with my editor and he does something that's not quite right, you know, I'm sitting there silently trying to process it. It's a little weird for a moment. If You know, later in, in the, and now with me and Lucas working with each other, it's all, it's all fluid and it's all good. 
But, you know, in the beginnings, being able to have that time apart to, like, sit and, you know, think about it and live with it for a minute and then send him my feedback and let him sit and live with the feedback and not not argue it right away, but, you know, process it. And then if he wants to argue it, argue it. But having that disconnect at least up front, I, at least I find, you know, really useful. Cool, cool, yeah. Well, um, let's, uh, I think we got a little bit more time and I, I want to open up a little bit for Q&A. Um, any, any questions for Ryan for about any of this, Ballistic, Frame.io, how you working with people remotely? Um, shout it out and we'll repeat the question to make sure everybody hears it. Any, any, any questions? You were first over here, I think. So all of these uh, files that are being traded back and forth, those are all through proxies? Is that what's going on? Or is it like, I mean, I would imagine that might be useful. That's a great question. You want to take that, Ryan? Yeah, those are all proxies um, until they're finals. I mean, my some of my VFX artists are always delivering the finals just in case that's the final. And then I'm like, great, approved, you're done. And they're like, cool, download it. And I'm like, oh, OK, cool. Um, so the finals are, are delivered through Frame.io as well. But you know, during the course of figuring things out, it's, it's usually proxies, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, it's shockingly fast. Uh, uploading to and downloading from Frame.io, I find whatever demon magic they're doing in the background, which they pay me to say, I'm kidding, they don't pay me. Um, whatever demon magic they're doing in the background is like faster than anywhere else I up or download. So we do everything through that. When I'm given the Frame.io sales page, I encourage everyone to take the same file and upload it to whatever online service you may be using as an alternate and just time it. Did you use uh, um, any of Frame.io for like pre-production or uh, just anagram, you know? Pre-production, yeah. Uh, I always do. Um, uh, I, I want to do more of that. Uh, you know, you have the PDF stuff now, and, and um, so, you know, like with pitches and stuff, that's definitely going to be a thing that's super helpful. Um, so going forward, I, I would love it to just be the one-stop shop for all pre-production and post-production. Um, but we definitely do a lot of, you know, test shots or test VFX, uh, different things like that in pre-production. So, yeah, it's definitely used for that sort, sort of stuff. And any kind of sizzle reel or pitch reel, you just, it's, do, it's a better presentation to send to people and be able to put the password on it instead of it being like Vimeo, YouTube, or, you know, some Google Doc video. It's just, and you can trust it more. There's been a lot of times where people are telling me that it won't play off Google Docs or whatever, and so I've never had that problem with Frame.io, so I do all that through Frame.io as well. Over here. Uh, so right now, I work a lot with, like, Whipster, and I'm looking to switch because um, sometimes whenever <laughs> I'm... Uh, we're working with like 12-bit video, and we'll color it, and then we'll upload it to Whipster. It compresses it and flattens it. And the clients always make comments about it looks really flat, and I'm like, no, it's really not. It's just, have you ever noticed anything like that with Frame.io? I don't want to turn this into like like knocking on anyone else, but let's speak to Frame.io only. Well, I, I've never used Whipster, so I couldn't say one way or the other. Um, but no, never. Um, everything looks exactly like you would see. You know, when we upload to YouTube, it, we've come accustomed to shifting how the, you know, our episodes look because we know it's going to shift a little bit on YouTube. So we actually, you know, do our post to, you know, uh, head in that direction. With Frame.io, that's never been the case. It seems pretty correct and unified across wherever we send it. Okay. Boy in the back there, shout it out and I'll repeat it. Or I'll, I'll just, I'll just I'll, you got it. Talk right into the mic. Um, when you were doing the the comments and the notes and stuff, did you mainly do it inside of Premiere, or did you mainly do it in the web interface? Oh yeah, the, he's talking about the Premiere extension. You have a panel inside of inside of Premiere. Uh, for me, it was the web interface because I wasn't uh, editing on this one. I would do you know some when we weren't together. I would take something and it would be easier to show him. So I would just because he would send me you know a, a drive with everything, so I could just open up and he would constantly update you know the Premiere file, so I could constantly have the latest. So I'd go in and maybe do like a hey, I mean something like this, um, and then I would send it through Premiere. But for the most part, he was sending me everything, or my VFX artists are sending me everything. So for me, it was all web interface. For him, he did most of it in, in the Premiere uh, panel, though. Follow up right here. Do you have educational packages, uh, bundles that we could, because I work at a film school, so maybe if we wanted to get 60 licenses, could we do that? Uh, we don't have a, a dedicated educational pricing, but talk to our sales team and we'll put together a package for you, uh, an enterprise package, because you'll probably be using a lot of storage and stuff, so we can, we can hook you up. 
How much storage uh, did you end up having to use for this whole project? Because it's pretty large, but probably the top end of what any of us would do. I don't even know, but it, it was a lot. Uh, if it was a terabyte, I would not be surprised. <laughs> it was just because it was all raw footage from, and I think uh, in LA we had seven or eight cameras. I can never remember how many there was, but we had seven or eight cameras with, I think it was three rolling at all times across three days. And then for the rest of production, which I think was seven days, was it Chase? I'm looking at you. Seven, let's call it seven. Uh, we had two cameras rolling at pretty much all times and all rolling, you know, raw. So it got it got hefty. It got big. And then my v, a lot of my VFX artists were always op uh, uploading the final instead of proxies. So that kind of went up a little bit. So it was, it was a lot. Yeah. I forgot we have, I, I should have invited Chase up here. I, I didn't realize he was going to be here. But uh, any questions about cinematography, I'm sure he can answer them. And any other any questions about ballistic, working with Frame.io, or just shooting cool stuff and making great movies? I mean, that is one thing with Chase. With Chase, that's one thing that Frame.io came in handy, because he's the DP, obviously. But he went off to other projects, so him being in the suite when we were doing the color was not really a thing so much. So being able to send him stuff and him give notes, and then he would even build out stuff that showed, like, hey, this is what I was thinking of the final that we were. I was able to take to the colorist. And even the colorist doing like a temp pass and then sending that to Chase and getting his feedback all happened uh, through Frame.io as well, which was really useful because, I mean, obviously, he's the DP, so I want his final you know vision of what we talked about and what he was trying to accomplish for the color you know in there which i have what i <clears throat> it's kind of like that across the board because i'm you know mostly a writer director um so you know, i could do a little bit of everything because of film riot and that's that's what we i've just come up doing but i'm not a dp i'm not a colorist so it it just comes to a point to where it's like you know like me and seth we can get 80 percent of the way there but then you bring people in and now all of a sudden it's 100 and you're like God bless you, you know? So it's like the, the colorist will send me stuff and I'm like, that's not quite right. And I'll send notes and then it comes back worse. And I'm like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> so now I can send it to Chase and he's like, well, dummy, say this. And I'm like, okay, so I say that and I'm like, oh, perfect. I should have just had you do it. So it's, you know, collaborating that way across this stuff and even having multiple people um, like on a VFX shot, we you know we had uh, Andrew was kind of VFX soup for the whole thing, so he could come in and look at everything and then give the notes on that, which would take something from being you know me going back and forth with the artist trying to get it there to Andrew giving one comment and now all of a sudden it's perfect and I'm like damn it, uh, so you know that stuff just brings the whole team together in a in a really useful way when you're not all in one location. It's like a digital studio really. Cool. All right, one more question and then we gotta wrap up. What's next for Ryan Connolly? Damn you, Scott. Uh, no short films this year. We're working on stuff uh, behind the scenes. Uh, hopefully something big to announce you know, at some point. But you know, who knows? It's the industry. You just push forward. Ballistic was like you know, sort of a, a proof of concept of sorts. Um, and we'll see what comes of it. Alrighty, thank you all for coming, and uh, let's give Ryan a hand and uh, wrap it up.